So this one we're going to teach you something about um, how you solve problems and some, maybe some unexpected um, timings you might not expect. So you have to be aware of that. So this is a very elegant solution. You can see it's really short. He basically converts both strings to list. Then he calls the sort function in um, in Python on a list. So this will uh, rearrange the list so they're both sorted. So they're sorted alphabetically from beginning to end. And once you've done that, all you have to do is compare the two lists. So he loops through um, the first list and if um, it matches the same position in the second list, um, if it gets all the way through that loop it, it, it matches and so it just returns that. So here's uh, the same solution uh, but just a little bit cleaner that I did so I'm going to talk about that. Um, so first I took advantage of the same thing I did in the previous solution one if the two strings are not the same length, I return false. I just do this in two steps because I want to actually remember uh, the value in the length of the string. And I convert both the strings to list. I sort them just like I, he did. And then I have this four, which is going to go through the list. And if it finds any two uh, pairs of characters different, it returns false. If it gets through the whole list and they're all the same, it's going to return true. So this 4 is of uh, O of N, and this is just simple assignment. So at first glance, it looks like this is only O of N, which is very fast. Uh, but it's not. And the problem is we're calling sort here on both lists. So you have to know um, something about sort. And this is the, the problem if you, you call complex methods that are built into your programming language, you need to know how fast they are. A uh, sort, the fastest you can sort is n log n. n log n is actually, let me make that a comment, n log n is faster than linear, which is n, but it's slower than n squared. Um, some sorts are n squared. Uh, the one that's in Python is very efficient, so it happens to be n log n, which is the best you can do with sort. So it turns out that this anagram solution, even though it looks like it may be n, is really n log n, because that's how fast you can sort. Okay, now in a lot of problems we're going to attack, there's always uh, usually what's called brute force. And brute force is you literally check everything that's part of the problem, every combination. You basically don't do much analysis on it. Uh, so basically the idea is you have the first string, why don't we just rearrange it every way we can rearrange it and so we end up with a list of all the arrangements of the first string and then see if one of those, if the, if the second string is in that list. And if it is, uh, we know we found uh, the string. So this is called brute force. He doesn't even give the algorithm. Uh, and if you look, it's it's a complex algorithm to do every combination. But if you think about it, when you start doing every combination, uh, suppose your string S1 and S2 are in long, okay? So you pick a character from S1, and then you rearrange every combination of all the rest of the characters. So you have n possibilities for the first character, and once you've picked that off, uh, the rest of them, you'll have n minus 1 characters. So you, you pick one of those off and pick it, and then you're going to have n minus 2 characters left, and so on. So it turns out if you start multiplying all these, this is how many things would be in your final uh, list of all the combinations. That's n factorial. This n factorial is one of the slowest algorithms you could ever design. Uh, let's suppose we are S1 were 20 characters long, there would be 20 factorial possible candidates, which is a number that's this big. If we process one, every possible po possibility every second, it would take, uh, let's see, so that's a million, it would take 77 billion, 146 uh, million, 816,596 years to go through it. Now those that have studied a little astrophysics know that 77 billion is actually much, much, much longer than the age of the universe since the Big Bang. And uh, so <laughs> that's a long time to wait for a solution. I don't think the Earth and the Sun would last that long in normal 
uh, 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 um, time. So the last solution we're going to show, a really elegant solution, what really is the fastest. So the final solution uh, takes advantage of the fact that any two anagrams will have the same number of A's, the same number of B's, the same number of C's, and so on. So the idea is to count how many A's are there, and how many B's are there, how many C's are there, and then see if we have the same counts for both strings when we're done. Uh, so let's see how this one works. So you form a, a count array. So you take a, an array of 0 and you multiply it by 26. Now what this does, when you multiply an array uh, with just one element by 26, it creates an array with 26 slots that all have 0. It's basically going to keep appending 0 26 times, as if you're doing add. So this is a shortcut for making an array or a list that has 26 zeros in it, and this one will have 26 zeros in it. So the idea is the first index, 0, here, will point to the letter A, and the number 1 will point to the letter B, and so on. So we have to do a little math here. Uh, you have to use a special function called the ORD function. You pass it a single character as a string, and what the ORD function then uh, returns a, a numeric value for that character, which is the Unicode value. And so to get A to be 0, you convert the first string. If it's an A, this would be an A, and then get the ordinate of that, and subtract the ordinate of A. So if you subtract A from A, you're going to get 0. You're actually subtracting the, the number that A represents and the number that A represents. So a B happens to be always 1 more than A in the numeric scheme. So when you subtract uh, ordinate of B minus ordinate of A, you're going to get 1, and so on, all the way to Z. For Z, you're going to get, if you subtract Z from minus A, you get 26, uh, I mean 25. You get the last index of this array. So what this does is for the uh, range of the first uh, string, it looks up the position by uh, looking up the position, the uh, ordinate of the character minus the ordinate of A, and then it increments position in C1 by 1. So it's basically counting uh, 1 for each character of the first string. And it does the same thing for the second string, but it's using the other array. And then we're all done. They're going to they're going to compare the two arrays. So they have a, a pointer to zero. And while it's still okay, and so while J is less than 26 and still okay, if the two things are equal, they're going to increment their pointer to the next character uh, in the array, and, or count in the array. And uh, if it's not equal, it's going to set still okay to false, which will cause the loop to end. Otherwise, it'll keep running until it gets the 26. If it gets the 26 and it's still OK, uh, the still OK will, will mean that everything's exactly equal in the two arrays, and they are anagrams. Uh, so this is that solution. And so how long does this take? Well, every part of it is actually n. It takes n to operations. Uh, it actually takes 26 operations to do this, 26 operations to do this. So we have 26 plus 26. Uh, for this, we have through the length of the, of the string, so that's uh, n. And then this is n on this assignment, and that's n for this assignment. And then these are n, n, and n. So if you add both of these up, you have 6n. And then you have 1 and 2. And then this is going to go 26 comparisons. And so that's 26. And so basically the size of this will be uh, a, a number times n uh, time, and then it's a number times 26, and then just a few other assignments. So it's going to be whatever smaller of 26 and n. And so when n gets bigger, uh, it turns out that'll be predominant. So if it's really large, like a, a word, an anagram that's 40 characters long, that's going to be predominant. So this is order n. So this is the fastest solution. It's it's called linear because it only uh, goes up one uh, uh, a, a proportional to n as n goes up. So you'll see he does it here. Uh, he gets n two n plus twenty six steps. So as n gets large, the it's predominantly O of n.
Now he gives a little test here, so you have to remember some things. Let me go through these. On this one, you have a nested loop where they both go one to n. So you have to remember what I said about that uh, to answer the right thing here. Uh, here it has two loops after each other and are not nested. So you have to know how to measure what's the, what's the O of n of this. So you should be able to just look at this code and say what O of n. So this, I'll do this one. This goes from one to n. And so basically you have o, o of n here, and this goes from one to n, so you basically have O of n here, and so you just, whenever you add O of n and O of n, that's like two n. So the n is gonna be predominant, so you'll have just O of n. So this is the correct answer. Uh, this is more complex. So uh, we have a loop that's going to do two things, but it's not counting from one to n. The loop is counting as, as long as i is greater than zero. So i starts at some n, i is greater than zero. Uh, they assign k to two plus two, so that's just gonna be n, or how many times the loop is, it's gonna do that. And then it divides i by two. So i is the thing that controls the loop. So if n starts out at 16, this would go i divided by two, it's integer divide, because it's two slashes. So it would go from 16 to eight, and then the next time the loop it'd go to four, and next time through the loop it'd go to two, and then it would divide it by, then it'd go to one, and then eventually it'd get to zero, and then it would stop. It would no longer be greater than zero. So you want to figure out what is this. So I'll let you cogitate on that. Um, and I'll reveal it in a future uh, video.